Hi folks, welcome along to building my virtual face car part 6, I think we're on now. Um, this one is going to be all about the uh, engine, I suppose, of the virtual race car, um, the PC. And there's the old one um, sitting up there, which uh, is going to a new home. And yeah, take the opportunity to build a brand new sim racing PC. So I'm just going to take you through some of the components that we've got. It's getting quite clustered in here, as I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> There's so much stuff, but uh, I'll take you through some of the components and then uh, I'm not going to go into too much details of how you actually build a PC, I mean, you're probably not interested. Um, but just, you know, some of the stuff that I've picked, why I've picked them. Um, and yeah, hopefully um, in the next couple of days or so we should get something up and running, which would be quite cool. So uh, yeah, let's have a look at some of the bits, shall we? So, first things first, the case. This is the Fractal Design Meshify 2. Um, which you can just about see coming through there. There's a dark tempered glass side panel on it. Um, I, I thought let's try and build something quite cool. You know these cool gaming machines you get nowadays. You can see the lights and all the fancy stuff inside it. But obviously I don't want things glaring off too much um, when I'm playing. So I thought the dark tempered glass would give us a subtle effect. Should look hopefully well. It looks in my mind quite cool anyway. Um, nice big mesh panel in the front there as well. Uh, mesh on the top, mesh on the bottom, hence the name, Meshify. Um, what drew me to the case was really the, the airflow. Um, it's all about keeping things cool, obviously, when I'm running with quite high spec stuff. So, um, and, you know, it looks quite you know understated, but, but cool as well. Uh, so that's what it's all going to go into. Hardware wise, as you can see, we've got quite a lot of stuff laid out here. So, let's go from left to right. A couple of fans to uh, just balance the airflow a little bit. I'm running a, I'm going to be running a radiator on top. Um, so I think I'm going to, in my mind, I'm going to use that to exhaust. I'm not sure there's different arguments whether you use it to pull air in or, or pull air out the case. But I think I'm going to have it on top and I'm going to have it exhausting. Um, so in order, order to balance the airflow, the case comes with three fans, one at the back exhausting and two in the front to pull in. I've got a couple more fans there, another one at the front to pull in and one in the bottom to, to pull in as well. I might add a fourth one, depending on what temperatures and things look like just to make sure I've got almost more air coming in than going out um, to try and keep a positive pressure in the case. Anyway, so that's that. Fractal 860 watt power supply. I go with the case. i um, got some uh, Razor Black Widow Pro keyboard and um, Hyperspeed Ballistic X Hyperspeed mouse, which again is uh, wireless, the main thing as well, because as you can see, the old, they've got the old trailing wire there and there's a trailing wire there. and Yeah, it just gets a bit a bit messy, especially when I want to move from sim rig to PC and I need to pull all the wires with me. Wireless is going to be so much power. Motherboard, we went for the uh, Gigabyte Oros, Aros, you can tell me how you pronounce that. Um, the X50S, so I, I, I've always been with kind of AMD recent life or stuff. I had the Gigabyte, uh, sorry, uh, a GeForce card a while ago. Um, but yeah, really, the AMD ecosystem. I've been quite enjoying that um, with the sim rigs and the gaming PCs that I've built the last few generations. So sticking with it. So this is the X570S. S meaning there's no um, onboard fan cooling it. The, some of these, I think before they released the S version they had, uh, they had to have a little fan in the chipset. So so high was it temperature was it running. But this the S doesn't have a fan which is good and cool. And I'm going to have the Ryzen 9 5000 series processor. This is the 5950X, which at the time of speaking, I think is the top spec. Again, as you can see, I've kind of went all out with spec here. I'm very much continuing the theme of, you know, sell the real race car and build the most crazy virtual one I can. Um, RX 1600 XT um, graphics card. Again, at the time of writing, that's pretty much the top AMD one you can get. So I'm looking forward to seeing how much of a boost this is over the old system. Because, I mean, the old system was running quite well. But yeah, I'm really quite excited to get all this stuff in. Um, 32 gig of RAM, DDR4, 3600 megahertz, and um, of course our Vengeance Pro. And we've got a couple of M2 drives. The motherboard has three M2 drive ports available. Um, I'm probably going to use two at the moment, but we've got a two terabyte Samsung 980 Pro as the main drive, and then I've got a one terabyte one. Probably use that for gaming. I'll probably keep the main one for sim racing, operating system, etc. And then have the second one for gaming, maybe flight simulator, because it takes up quite a lot of space as well. But you know, we'll play with all that. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. I think 
I think I've missed anything. Um, hopefully it should be a pretty awesome computer. It's going to take me a while to put all this into that. But I'll, uh, yeah, I'll let you know how we get on. <laughs> there we go! Took me all last night to the next day. Um, but we're all in. I have to get the torch to hopefully show things out. There's a graphics card in there. We've got the water cooler. I'm going to have to put this down. Up there. On the CPU that goes up to the radiator at the top. Along there. Yeah, all the RAM's in there. We installed the th third fan at the bottom there and the fourth one right in the floor. Power supply's under this mesh at the bottom. Yeah, everything looks pretty pretty neat and tidy, I would say. Even around the back. Oh, I'll just pop it down. All the cable management. No, I'm quite happy with that. I mean, there's a lot of fan cables to try and wrap up, but these little handy Velcro tabs that they give you. It's, uh, yeah. Pretty happy, it's all neat and tidy. There's a bit of a squeeze getting the power supply in at the end because it's a modular one, so I had to plug things uh, in uh, to the power supply. Well, the power supply was just sitting at the back there, and yeah, there wasn't much spare cable. Maybe I should have plugged it into the power supply first and then plugged it into the motherboard, but hey ho, we got there in the end. So, hopefully, I've plugged everything into the right port, and let's hook it up to a monitor and try it out. Woohoo, it works! <laughs> I did plug everything into the right place. Glass needs a bit of a clean, but there we go. First time I've had a lighty up PC. And just like that, we're up and running. Everything's installed and working. Um, I wish it was as simple as uh, <laughs> I just made it out to be, or we'll be watching this video back. But um, yeah, I had a few little issues with uh, things not running properly or being compatible and etc but had to basically wipe everything and start again um, but it's all set up now so technology yeah you've got to love it so yeah everything's looking pretty cool um, PC wise there we go I've got the, the keyboard obviously it's got the little light up on it as well and this little red backlit to um, match the rest of the rig and yeah everything is looking good so yeah there we go that is the PC in and running I've had a little bit of a test in the uh, iRacing and the Citadel Corsa and yeah the graphics card and processor are absolute beasts. <laughs>
first thing you'll notice here is the loading time is fantastically fast <laughs> in the uh, ACC with the new computer. If you remember those uh, hard drives, those well, the, the main one I'm running off is the two terabyte um, Samsung 980 Pro um, M2 drive, and yeah, it uh, it loads super quick. Um, another thing, just to let you know, if you see any judderiness or, or jumpiness in the screen, that is due to um, OBS, the tool I'm using to record this. I've not been a big fan of high frame rate stuff. So apologies for that, but I can assure you that the game looks fantastically smooth. It's uh, so the sim, I should say. <laughs> looks fantastically smooth. So let's let's head out. Green light, green light. Go, go, go. <clears throat> so, ignition. Or are we sitting at FPS at 95 in the pit lane? That's not too bad. Let's engage pit limiter on first. Take it out on track, see how that changes. Keep your eye on the top left hand corner. Low time pressure, stay clear on the curves. How are we doing? 98, fairly stable. 7. I'll try not to put it in the wall while constantly looking up over my left hand shoulder. We're still high 90s, aren't we? <clears throat> so I think Assetto Corsa looks fantastic. It's one of the best looking sims out there, I think, at the moment. The Unreal Engine they use, obviously. You'll see when we go across to iRacing the, the difference. I mean, iRacing looks good, it's not a bad looking sim. But the engine's just not quite as advanced as, the, as I use it here. How do I frame it here? 91. Now, this is one of the worst places in iRacing because of that that uh, grandstand you can see in the distance there. But you can see, see the wall on the left hand side, see how that shadow moves. It's, it's weird isn't it? That's where the highest shadow distance setting as well. I try to dial that out by putting the shadow distance setting up. But uh, that's the size it goes. You still get that little effect which is a bit strange but it's not the end of the world. But yeah, frame rate very solid. Certainly every time I've glanced up at it, it's been up for 90s. The driving experience is definitely fantastic. As far as a visual as far as everything goes to be fair, <laughs> the hardware on this rig is pretty cool. But yeah, visually, looks fantastic. Can we come down here? Where are we? 94, we dipped to there, 96. Yeah. Absolutely no complaints with that. The thing looks amazing. And it's so smooth. I mean, to be rocking three 2K monitors at these kind of frame rates with this kind of visual quality is pretty impressive. For me, anyway. Again, from what I'm used to. This is amazing. So, that'll do for ACC. And we'll head over to iRacing and see how that looks. Catch you there. Right, here we are in iRacing to do the same test, same circuit, same car. Um, let's have a look at some of the graphics options. So I've had a little play with things, um, in and out, different ideas, and trying to kind of roughly get the same kind of sweet spot as we had in ACC. Um, most settings in here are fully bumped up to maximum. I haven't got too much anti-aliasing on, because again, there's not much point um, with high resolution. Um, cars. Oh, there we are, pit objects and sky, sorry not cars, pit objects and sky, I've got medium because again you're not in the pits that often and hopefully you won't be looking at the sky too often either, just to try and crack back, because having those in maximum, I mean visibly no difference I could see and the frame rate dropped a little bit, so anyway let's go for a lap, again apologies for any stuttery video, and um, that's the recorder not the game, I assure you it looks good in person, your frame rate um, counter here is up in the top right hand corner of the screen, currently sitting at 87, 88, 9, 88-ish frames a second. Let's head out and see how that changes. <clears throat> I 
decent speed so far, though it had dropped down 75. At least a bit low. Again, I can't notice anything with the naked eye changing, but when you look at that figure, it's jumping around a little bit. Wow, 140, I think we hit the air, did we? So immediately obvious is that it's jumping around a lot more than a set of course I did. And I'm not massively surprised by that because presumably that is due to the less refined engine possibly, one would say. This is one of the worst bits for I racing here, 72, 69, 65. That's one of the worst sections of the track, any track that I'm aware of, for graphics and iRacing. I don't know if it's to do with the uh, to do with the grandstand there popping into view, but it always struggles there. Yeah, again, up here we're getting a little bit of a drop, is that? Because again, we can see that grandstand. The grandstand must not be very well coded. So yeah, we're kind of hanging around the... We're in the 80s most of the time. We could probably pull some graphics back to get a little bit more out of it, but again, you know, I'm... I'm You've got to kind of remind yourself what we're doing here. Running three, three screens at 2K resolution, trying to hit over, and we're you know we're hitting over, over 80 frames a second most of the time. That's still pretty impressive, I would say. 59, 58. Again, if I wasn't looking at that display, to be quite honest with you, I wouldn't have noticed that frame rate drop there. My eyes just don't pick anything up. It's that slow. So yeah, reasonably happy with that. Certainly very pleased with the performance of the PC and that is the point of this video. So hope you enjoyed watching it guys and stay tuned for the next one. In the meantime, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.